All right, what's up guys? This is Jonathan. Uh, today I'm just gonna go over my kind of every man's review of my new 2023 CB500X. Um, I've put about 1500 miles or so on it. So I'm just gonna go for a ride, tell you a little bit about what I like. Maybe a few little cons, but it's mainly just how an average man who has maybe five, five years of riding experience enjoys the bike so far and hopefully it'll help you guys out if you are looking to get one. All right, let's go ahead and get on the road. All right, so the first category is the looks of the bike. So obviously I can't really show you that much uh, while I'm on the bike. So we'll find a little spot and uh, give you a little overview. I really like it so far. Um, I don't think any anybody is really gonna be polarized by the looks. I think they did a good job of it, but let me jump off and show you guys. Yeah, so obviously I added these, uh, this top case in the luggage rack, which I'll get into later. But overall, I think they did a good job of the looks. Uh, it's very streamlined looking, nothing goofy looking, which some adventure bikes can kind of start looking a little goofy in my opinion, but it's all pretty basic. Um, a little bit of fairing and uh, gas tank cover right there. I like the little accents. I like the green that I got. Um, they obviously have a few different colors, but yeah, overall, I think the looks are pretty good. Um, this is not come with the bike. So the stock windshield is just this part, not this, I added that. But other than that, yeah, I think it looks great. All right, let's go jump back on the road and I will go over some of the comfort details of this bike. If I can get it up this gravel hill, which is another little uh, performance bit right there. It was able to make it up that hill, so that's always a good thing. Um, this is about kind of the gravel road uh, that I've gone on before. It handles it more than, more than well. Um, I've been very impressed with the off-road capability that I've done, like I said, I am a kind of everyman, so I don't have a whole lot of off-roading experience with bikes. So this is kind of my first foray into it, and it's servicing me very well for that purpose. All right, so yeah, as far as comfort goes, I've, like I said, put about 1,500 miles on it. Um, a lot of those were about 300 mile days, uh, nothing too much longer than that. Um, and really the only thing I noticed was my legs got a little cramped, so I will say, starting off with comfort, this bike is definitely not made for people who are maybe over 6'2". I'm about 6'2", so anything over that, I'd say your legs would get a little cramped. I would actually like a little bit taller seat height, which is kind of crazy, because it is, I think, 31, 32, something like that. It's not bad. I would just suggest maybe getting some highway bars, highway pegs, um, if you're gonna be doing longer distances and you have a little bit longer legs, just because my legs get a little cramped. But beyond that, it's really a comfortable bike. Um, the seat kind of pushes you a little forward. I don't know if that's a height thing as well, but uh, I feel like I kind of slide forward a little bit. So maybe a little seat cushion or something for longer rides would be preferable. Um, I'm gonna work on trying to figure that out for myself in the future, but just keep that in mind. Um, so we're kind of on a little bit faster road now. Um, this is where the comfort really comes into play. I like the windscreen. Um, again, it all comes down to kind of my height. So I'm a little tall in the torso. So the stock windscreen does uh, I don't know, it doesn't, it kind of hits me right in the face or the top of the helmet. So that's why I added this uh, windshield extension. Um, and I think that helped a lot, um, but in general, up until maybe 60 to 70 miles an hour, the stock windscreen works perfectly fine for me. So depending on your height, you may not even have to worry about it at all. Another thing I'll probably add later is some bar risers. It'd be nice to have it a little bit up and back for me. Um, I can't quite stand up perfectly and reach the bars in the way I'd like. So those are probably gonna be upgrades in the future that I'll add. All right, so we're getting out of some of the heavier traffic here. This brings me to um, kind of the second or the third thing I wanna talk about is just the gas mileage real quick. I've been extremely impressed. I don't know if you can see my dash right there, but I've put 1,427 miles on and I have an average of just under 72 miles a gallon. Um, going into riding this bike, I really thought it would be a little bit lower from what a lot of people were saying, um, but I haven't necessarily babied it, but I also am fairly conservative just because I like saving money. So um, yeah, it has been extremely good for gas mileage that includes quite a few rides on the Blue Ridge Parkway or just around town for the most part nothing crazy nothing super fast um, but I've been very impressed so yeah around 72 miles per gallon for the first uh, 1500 miles which I cannot complain about in the slightest all right so as far as performance um, it's nothing crazy I don't have really the numbers on me right now like I said this is kind of a uh, every man's review of the bike 
but it has more than enough torque power to keep up with traffic on uh, the interstate highways uh, about 70 to 80 miles an hour so it's it's more than fine um, but this is really where i usually ride it it's just in the kind of twisties like this it hangs out with the uh the sport bike riders to a certain cc and uh, it can also do the off-road stuff so for the most part, performance is very average to above average in a lot of categories, which means obviously it's not amazing at any one category, but that's kind of what you're getting into with this bike is uh, the ability to do a lot of mid-range activities, uh, mountains, light off-road with the stock setup. Uh, but I have thoroughly enjoyed it on roads like this uh, where I'm just kind of cruising along uh, on the twisties as well as going to and from work. I think it's an amazing comfortable bike for that. Um, just not a crazy amount of power but that's what you're getting into with this bike. Uh, nothing crazy but it works for everything it needs to do in my opinion and what I needed to do. Yeah, It looks like I don't have to struggle quite as much as the FedEx truck getting up these hills so that's always a plus. So yeah, I guess one of the last things I'll say about performance is that it just feels very planted. Uh, it feels very capable in almost anything you want to do, which means it's not extremely capable in any one thing, but it is very capable in a very varied amount of things, if that makes sense. So at this price point, you do have to look at other options, I think. Uh, I looked at the Husqvarna Sparkbillin 401, uh, which is quite a bit cheaper. However, the tank size on that, I think it's around 2.5 five gallons or something maybe a little bit less i'm not sure but that kind of dissuaded me from going that route just because this bike has a 4.5 gallon tank or something like that 4.6 something like that so just the ability to go 300 miles in one tank was so attractive to me and i actually have managed to do that on multiple occasions with this fuel economy um i've had multiple 300 mile days on a 7300 adventure bike um so that's not bad at all um, I think you get a lot of miles for your buck and uh, I think that does count for a lot especially if you live somewhere where you kind of have to ride out to get to the nice riding roads like me. Um, it comes in handy being able to actually go out there do a ride and then make it all the way back without having to fill up in the middle of the mountains or something like that. Keep that in mind I think that's a big pro for the price point um, but I think at this price point you do have to look at other options. This is just kind of my review of this bike at this price point and I think it it does well for the price point. I would have liked to see it maybe a little bit lower but I think the build quality and what it offers definitely fits in well with the price point and I just realized I'm saying price point a lot but I mean hey it, it, it does well for the money you pay for it and that's really all you can ask. Yeah so that's kind of my initial thoughts about the bike after about 1500 miles obviously I'm looking to put in quite a few more than that in the future but the last thing I really want to talk about is kind of the luggage options. So right now I have the SW Motec top case with the street rack and it was super easy to install. Just take the seat off, undo some bolts and put that on. So for the most part, that's awesome. I haven't had really any complaints with it. Um, it would be nice if it was fully waterproof, but it does come with an inner bag that you can put stuff in that is waterproof. So these are the SW Motec Pro side luggage option rack thingies. Um, I don't have any complaints with those yet, but I, I haven't actually gotten any bags to put on them. I really just got them as a base to put on um, some like just layover bags, um, but they do sell bags that'll clip right in. They're just a little bit out of my price range for the moment. Um, however, I am looking at those in the future. So as far as luggage options go, it would be nice to have like a stock rack maybe. Um, however, there are quite a few aftermarket um, companies who are making racks and luggage options for it, which is nice to see. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what my setup is right now and I'll update you guys once I get some bags for it and how well they work. Again, I think it looks great. I think it performs well for the price point and I definitely recommend it for anybody who's looking to get one. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned for more K-Truck and CB500X videos. Um, I'm going to try to at least post one or two a week. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.